All right, what's up, everybody? This is, used to be Coach Vaughn, but now Pastor Vaughn. Uh, but I ain't tripping over no name, man. Y'all call me whatever you want, right? Vaughn is good enough. But I just wanted to make sure that I continue pouring into you all. Um, I'm not in a suit. I was trying to do the suit thing for a while, and I'll still do suits every now and again um, and as much as possible. But, you know, I, it's, I just want to make sure that y'all get the information, whether I'm in a suit, whether I'm not in a suit. Um, what I, one thing that I've realized is that life will try to do everything it can to keep you from uh, doing the things that you feel are worthwhile and pouring into people. And so me doing these videos is an attempt for me to fight against that, to push back against that. You know, I have a lot on my plate, but I'm trying as much as I can not to allow um, all the busyness of life to, to keep me from doing for you all what I would like to do for you all. And so um, I get a lot of good information on a daily basis because I'm blessed to have some major mentors in my life, um, you know, aside from just my, fam my own family, but you're talking about the extended family that I now have because of um, who God has allowed me to be connected with. And so I don't want you all to miss out on some of the information that I get on a daily basis. So as much as is possible, I want to, you know, hit you all with, with, with some information uh, that I receive, anything that I feel stands out to me for the day. I don't know how often I'll be able to do it, but as, as many days as I can, I will. But I want to give you guys some information that I think will be a blessing for your life. So um, I'll, let me just get right into it. Let me not waste your time. Let me not make, waste my time. So the first question I have for you that that's, was on my mind all day today is, can God trust you with success? And listen, there's some heights that I would like to get to that I see that while I might have wanted to get to it, while I might have had the talent for it, while I might have had the charisma for it, 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 I possessed everything that I already need for the next level, but sometimes God has not, even now maybe, right? God has not allowed me to reach certain levels, not because he doesn't want those levels for me, but because maybe my character is not where he needs it to be um, to operate at the next level, right? And that's important because, like I wrote here, there is more at stake for you at the next level, right? And there is also more at stake for your followers at the next level. So imagine this. Myself, who likes to speak, it was really my, um, my, my, my mentor, one of my mentors, my, one of my big brothers, Mason West, who was giving this analogy. And so one of the things that I would like to do is to speak, right? And speak on a full-time basis. But imagine when you get to the next level, if, if, first of all, if your character is not where it needs to be, on the next level, there's a lot more temptation thrown at you when you have more success. When you get promoted, when you get elevated, right? When you reach the status of greatness, better believe that, you know, for the fellas, there are going to be more women throwing themselves at you. For the ladies, there are going to be more men throwing themselves at you, right? You're going to have now more opportunity to get outside of your character, to get outside of your principles. And if God can't, if, if, if you can't be trusted with that as yet, then God might say, I, I just need you to stay at the same level that you're at for now until I can trust you at the next level. And then here's another thing. At the next level, more is going to be expected of you. Right? Like I said, there's more at stake. So, so there's more at stake for you. If you don't get it right, your fall from greatness will stand out more than your rise to the top. Unfortunately, that's how things often go. Um, we, and unfortunately, we can see that in the life of men like Bill Cosby right now. And I love and adore who, you know, we've known Bill Cosby to be what he was able to accomplish, how he was able to impact the lives of black people. But unfortunately, um, there are some things that are beginning to negatively, um, seriously negative, negatively affect, um, you know, his image now. And so sometimes God is waiting for you to, for your character to be able to handle him, handle you going to the next level, simply because there's more at stake for you if you don't succeed at that level, right? If you drop from that level. But watch this. And I think this is even more important. There's more at stake for those who are underneath your influence if you don't get it right at the next level. And what I mean by that is, let's say if I'm, if I'm a speaker, I like to speak, I like to imp pour into people's lives. If I'm giving people the wrong information then, and they implement that information, then that could be detrimental for their lives and it could go past their lives. So, so for instance, I do see a lot of relationship information that gets passed around on social media. And while that information sounds good, 
being somebody who's gotten married, gone through a divorce, and seen what and studied successful versus unsuccessful relationships for quite for quite a number of years now, I know that some of that information might sound good that's being passed around on social media, but if somebody decides to actually implement that into their actual relationship situation, they might be in for a very bad day. Okay, so so understand this. Now I know before I speak what's happening. There's more at stake for the person that's listening to me. Why? Because when they hear me, they're expecting me to give them relationship wisdom that's going to take their marriage or that's going to take their uh, uh, situationship to the next level. Right. Um, but on top of that, if let's say if I don't get that information right, then not only are they affected, but their children might be affected. The, their, their loved ones who are connected into this relationship together from both sides of the family might now be affected, right? Friends that they share mutually will begin to be affected. Their finances, right? Five, uh, 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 one of the strong components of relationships is finances, right? Their finances might be affected if things don't go, if they implement the wrong information, all right? And then not only that, but let's think about the far-reaching effects. Their community, Right. We, we know I, I work in a community right now, which we might call, you know, the hood where you can see the effects of um, a large scale or mass quantity of broken or incomplete relationships and how that doesn't just affect the, the families that are in those relationships, but a whole community is affected because of the such just this large scale amount of broken down family units. Right. So. When you go to the next level, more is going to, there's a Bible verse that says that to whom much is given, more much is required, right? So more is going to be required of you because there's more at stake. So now this is moving on to something else. Um, matter of fact, I want to read this from, a, um, I'll read this from the Bible text. But here you can see it says Proverbs chapter 25, verse 8. I hope you can see it at least. I'm not a master camera person, but I hope you can see it. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 8. And to sum up, you guys can look that up online or what have you, right? But to sum up what it was, what, what it was saying there or what I was getting from Proverbs chapter 25, verse 8, I wrote here, Your senses aren't always communicating the truth about your circumstances. Your senses aren't always communicating the truth about your circumstances. Listen to what it says. It says, don't jump to conclusions. There may be a perfectly good explanation for what you just saw. And what I've come to realize is that I was watching this show with my friend Nicole and it's called Brain Games. And there's this room, I forgot what it's called, but there's this particular room. Some of you may have seen it before where the room is actually designed with its dimensions off. Like none of the dimensions are really equal or symmetric. But what happens is when you look at the room, your brain based on its past experiences of seeing various types of rooms automatically perfects the picture or makes the picture look like what you're used to seeing but if two people walk into the room from opposite ends one person will look extremely big and another person will look extremely small and in your mind you're like yo this looks crazy like these people look crazy right but as they approach the center they look like normal size and they actually appear to be the, they, they are the same height you realize they're the same height but what that showed me is that you know when the bible says things like um, you know, faith is the evidence of things not seen. You have to be careful only going based on what your five senses or some may say six senses uh, 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 show you or tell you. Right. Because and for those of you like myself who believe in God, you know, what I've come to realize is that your senses may not necessarily be conveying the full picture to you and your senses tend to be very limited now your senses are good i don't want you to think that you should just stop driving with um your eyes open right because you just believe in, in just another sense but what i do mean is that there do come some of you guys are wondering like yo why, why do you find yourself in a particular situation or why don't things seem to be going right and you have to understand that while your senses may be telling you something about your circumstances God knows way more about your circumstances. Matter of fact, let, let's Joseph, right? Joseph, for those of you who know the Bible, I hope this video isn't going to be too long, but whatever. Joseph, for those of you who know Joseph in the Bible, Joseph, there was one point in the story where 
you know, he had gotten forgot about for two years. He had solved the, the, the dream for this person, and he asked that they would remember him, but the person forgot about him for two years. But then eventually, there was a problem that caused the person to remember Joseph, and that eventually, Joseph being able to be the only one to solve the problem, eventually elevated him into second command of the nation that they were part of, and really second in command of the whole world, right? But what, this is what I want you to pay attention to. Joseph wanted to be freed based on the, what he was feeling, based on what he saw in his circumstances. But if Joseph was paying attention, he was living in a foreign land. He was a former slave and he was a former or, or he was a current uh, prisoner. Right. So a, a foreigner who was a slave and now was a prisoner. If he had gotten released. Right. We know what prisoners go through today. We know what like is it, what job would he have gotten in that type of society at that time. Right. But what God realized is that, listen, I know more about your circumstances and I know that if you just wait for those two years, I'll eventually catapult you and elevate you um, to the next level. Right. But all right. So I think you guys get the message from that already. If you need more, just let me and I'll break it down even more. But going on to the third thing so I can close this video out and make sure that it's not too long. You need to operate with the with the right motives. And I can say for, for, for real, like. Operating with the right motives has not necessarily always been what I've done. And watch this, you, have, you need to be careful because a lot of times we might do the right things or we might perform the right actions, but we might perform the right actions and do good things, but with the wrong motives, which makes it still wrong. And I know for me, one of the things that I used to wanna always do was, um, I used to wanna, like there are a lot of things that I would do because I wanted to make money, right? So I wanted, some, some speakers get caught up in speaking because they just wanna make a lot of money. And what I realized, no, Making money is not a bad thing, but if that's my primary motive, then it's not, then, then, then I'm wrong.